Try very hard. So, let me say, check this out. You walked into the room and put a smile upon my face. Smile upon my face. Do you still remember? I said, please don't leave too soon. Because I really want to know your name. I'll never forget that day. Yep, now we have come a long way. And time goes by so fast. Again and put trust back in my heart. Cause you ain't my sweetie pie or the apple of my eye. You were that amazing humble girl that's running around my mind. Whatever I do, you know, no, no matter near or far. Wherever you go, I go, my darling. Wherever you are, I are. <laughs> Wherever you are, I are. Mm -hmm. It ain't so hard to be. So lost in the love you found. Lost in the love you found. Cause the beauty that I can see goes deep within yourself. Deep within yourself. You bring out the best in me. Talo falava, kia ora, whakalofa lahi atu everyone and welcome to the Pacific Health Talano Show with myself, Susana. I'm not deliberately leaving out Lorenzo in my short intro because believe it or not, he has entrusted me again to take the driver's seat for today's show, meaning that our brother has his guest um, hat on today. Um, now, if you've just tuned in, please feel free to comment through your questions. We don't just want to inform and create discussions. We want your voice and your input into this platform. So please don't be shy. Send through your questions. But anyway, um, today I'm speaking with Lorenzo. Now, outside of the health show, Lorenzo is the community engagement manager at Total Healthcare and Local Doctors. He's also the producer at PMN Samoa, and he's going to be sharing his views on the current situation with the vaccination centers. So, Talofa Lorenzo, thank you so much, bro, for bringing the subject to light. You know, you and I have had so many discussions around vaccines. There are so many people out there with strong views. But can you share with us your own experience on the vaccination and testing procedures? Um, thank you, Sana. First of all, I would like to, uh, you know, thank God for for keeping everybody safely and for blessing us with another beautiful day. You know, um, today was such a beautiful, um, awesome day. I wish I could get out there and, you know, take my kids to um, you know, to a playground and, and have fun and play with them. But it is what it is, Sana. But so thank you so much for, you know, taking the wheel, um, driving our water, our water today. No um, and it's awesome being a guest on the other side of the show, just to share my experience and, you know, um, and, and some advice, giving some advice, some key messaging to our um, beautiful community who are still unsure and, and who are still experiencing anxiety because of the lockdown and, and the COVID-19. So my experience, you know, with the COVID-19 vaccination, uh, because I'm a health worker, um, I was in the, you know, category one, you know, I have to be um, vaccinated um, in, in the first class, you know, before um, I could continue to do the work that I, that I do. So I got vaccinated at the Manukau Super Clinic. And to be honest, um, 
I didn't hesitate no once at all. And that is because I'm not only um, a half worker and I have to walk, you know, to talk. I have to talk the walk. And I have to I have to, you know, action what I preach and what I and what I do. So for me, um, to be able to build that trust in people and that belief in people about the vaccination and the work that we do, um, you know, I, I had to do it. And plus, I had to do it for myself. And that is because I believe COVID-19 is real, it's serious, you know. After seeing millions of people dying, you know, in the world and also here in New Zealand, um, you know, I, I say to myself, I've got to do something to protect myself, to protect my family and to protect the whanau that I work for and I work with. And that was, you know, so the bottom line was for me to, if I wanted to, to get the trust of, of, of my people, I, I had to take the lead. So the experience was, you know, it's pretty simple, you know, getting vaccinated, to be honest. Um, I just had to hop on a, on the, um, the Book My Vaccine website, made my booking, and I got a text from, you know, from the, uh, the Ministry of Health um, COVID-19 team of when I was to be vaccinated, uh, and they gave me directions as well. So um, I went ahead um, and got vaccinated at the super clinic in Manuko, but my second vaccination was done at one of our sites in Mangere, which is located at the um, Airport Oaks, um, one of our clinics in, in Mangere called Local Doctors Airport Oaks, which is right next to Naomi Hotel, another MIQ facility. So the whole process for me, I was quite smooth, to be honest. Even the waiting time at the um, at the super clinic and the local doctors Airport Oaks, it wasn't that bad. I only had to wait for 15 minutes. Um, I got called in um, and I got a jab and I was asked to wait for um, you know about 15 minutes to make sure that if I do experience any side effects or withdrawals of the vaccination, um, you know, how professional is there to to uh, to care for me? So yeah, it was quite it was quite simple, quite smooth. Mm. Thanks heaps for that, Renzo. I mean, I know how important it is um, with you being a healthcare worker, and that um, you had no hesitation to to undertake the vaccination, but um, did you did you personally have any doubts um, with this vaccine? And if so, what research did you undertake to ensure you're confident um, in your decision? Like I said, Sana, you know, seeing people dying, um, you know, we saw what happened in uh, in Spain, in Italy, in India, um, South Africa, in America, China, man. Beginning of last year, we saw millions of people dying from uh, from this pandemic, and so for me, because it happened in Samoa as well, you know, with measles, it happened in Samoa. There was an influenza, um, you know, epidemic in Samoa back in 1918. So that got me to believe that you know COVID-19 is real. So I did not even doubt that um, you know, I didn't have any second guess that you know that um, COVID as all as all planned by the government, you know, like what, we, what we've what heard and what we've seen, you know, with some of the misinformation and conspiracy theories. So for me, I didn't doubt that COVID was real. Um, and so when I had the chance to get vaccinated, I went for it because not only it was free and the whole system was given, you know, the whole process was given to me. I mean, I didn't have to go, didn't have to, you know, um, you know, yeah, lift, lift a finger, you know, to, um, to, to, to go through that whole process, I was just told to go online, you know, made, made a booking, made an appointment. It was quite simple, you know, simple as that. Even, um, you know, the vaccination, and I, I know some people, and I've had people asking me um, that they thought the needle was quite big, you know, but the needle is the you know, same size as other needles that, that I use for vaccination and immunizations. Um, it's quite thin. I mean, I didn't even feel the needle going in, in my arm. To be honest, as you saw on that video, um, the only side effects that I felt it was the day after I got vaccinated, um, my my arm was a bit sore, and that was it. My arm was a bit sore, but it didn't really affect me from doing what I what I needed to do, you know. Um, so yeah, I didn't even doubt getting vaccinated. 
And like I say, it is there for a reason. It is there for, um, you know, to protect myself and my family. And also, um, I had a, a chat with um, a few church ministers about, you know, the spiritual belief and, and the spiritual perspective of the vaccination. And that really gave me 120, 150 assurance that it is safe. And it is there for a reason after, you know, having a Delanoa with um, some high ranking church ministers and the way they explain it, you know, based on uh, on the spiritual and the Fatlianganga perspective, I mean, man, it, it made really sense. You know, they they all made sense in how they connected because there are scriptures and there are you know stories in the Bible that also speaks about vaccination and pandemic. So yeah, um, thank you so much. I really love how you um you've talked about the spiritual perspective of um, the vaccine because, you know, as you know, our community, they're so, um, they're so entrenched in faith, right? And so I, I, I agree with you. I, I feel that, um, that people, our people in the community, you know, there's, there's, no, um, there's no doubt in my mind that, that they can um, approach their ministers mm. to talk about the vaccine and help them um, come to a decision whether or not the vaccine is right for them. And I also, um, you know, like that you've acknowledged that there's a high death toll in other countries with COVID-19. Mm. Um, and just bringing it back to home, you know, what we've seen in the Pacific, places like Fiji, uh, New mm. Caledonia, you know, the, the, the numbers of vaccine, I mean, the numbers of cases there, it's, it's astronomical and it's shocking, mm. you know, to see that people there are still doubtful um, of COVID and um, the benefits of the vaccine. But anyways, um, you know, bringing it back to our discussion, you know, there's no doubt that our New Zealand government is under immense pressure with the rollout. So, um, you know, what can our community leaders do in the areas where they have low vaccination rates? You know, what can they do to encourage people to take up the vaccine? I think, um, Sana, we've all seen what our community leaders have been doing, have been trying to do. But the question is, what can we do as community people? You know, what can I, what can head of our families, what can our, you know, our men, what can our tomatai, what can we do? To protect ourselves. I mean, yesterday there was a, a session conducted by um, three or four church ministers, and it was aired live on Facebook by Prepare Pacific. So that's that's all part of you know the process. That's all part of the work that our church ministers and our community leaders are trying to do to encourage and to reach out to our people. But then for me, okay, we need to take ownership as well. You know, Sana, um, we need to. We also need to be on the waka with them, you know. Um, it is time for for our community to take the lead as well, and to be part of that leadership and part of that, um, you know, of that journey. Um, but um, for me, it comes down to each families. To be honest, um, having that clear understanding about the seriousness and about the importance of um, of the vaccine, of getting vaccinated. It comes down to understanding that COVID-19 is real and that, you know, we are seeing it. I mean, I don't know what else we need that we need to, to make us realize that, you know, COVID-19 is real. And can I also add that COVID-19 COVID is now in American Samoa. There was a case found yesterday. So it's not far from, from our beautiful Samoa. And we need to, to work together as a team. We need to work together with our Pacific leaders. There is nothing that they can do if the community is not meeting halfway. So we need to be able to say, leaders, okay, you are giving us the information. That's, we appreciate the work that you do. You're giving us the vaccine for free. We've got everything that we need. You're setting up, you know, pop-up vaccination centers, vaccination clinics. You're setting up, um, you know, testing stations for us to get tested to make sure that we're safe. This is what we're going to do. We're coming to you. We're coming to, 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 to take advantage. We're coming to, to make use of that systems. So even um, there's a lot of information that can relate to different ages and, and different genders. You know, um, there's information on, uh, online that 
that helps our young people um, in, in, in different ages. So for me, the question, I mean, my, the question is for me, as a community person, as a member of the community, what can I do to protect myself and my family? What can I do to work together with the Pacific leaders? Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, um, I, d I didn't realize that there was a case in American Samoa, so it's quite concerning that um, Delta um, has slowly made its way through around the Pacific. But I, but I personally feel it's not all um, doom and gloom mm. because recently we've had the MMT vaccination drive through as part of um, the celebrations of Tongan Language Week, which was two weeks ago. And um, mm. so, you know, what other Pacific targeted vaccination campaigns can we expect here um, in New Zealand in the coming days or weeks? Um, thanks for that, um, Sana. So we've got, um, first of all, because I work for local doctors and total healthcare PHO, and we, we went back to the community and asked, um, where would you like to get vaccinated? Where? because it is really important, the venue, the location, um, and how, how we, we do the whole vaccination part of it is really important that we get the feedback from our people. And, and people say, look, some of us, we prefer to go to our own GPs and get vaccinated because we already have that bar and the relationship and that we can talk freely, openly to them about the vaccination and about the COVID-19. So we took that on board and our local doctors took that on board and we decided to open three clinic based vaccination centers. One, two are in Otara and one in Mount Rascal. Um, and we also opened two vaccination centers back in April. Um, one at the Ranui Church, the Ranui PSC Church, that's a familiar venue to our West Auckland community. Um, and then one at the um, airport Oaks in Mangere. Oh, these five centres are open to anyone over 12 years. There is no booking required and you do not need to present your passport or anything else so long as you, know, you, you, you are eligible as in your you know, eligibility age, then you're good to go. You just walk in and get vaccinated, wait for 15 minutes and out again. I'm also aware that there is a new Wayne, a new Wayne pop-up vaccination center um, this weekend. Um, and Lemo, Lemo has got the, um, I mean, Rams has got the, um, the poster there. So we've done one for, for our Samoan community at the LDS Church 15 Robertson Road um, in Mangere. It is now um, our brothers and sisters from New Way are now having their turn and their vaccination center is on this weekend, this Thursday, starting from this Thursday to Saturday at the same location, LDS um, Church 15 Robertson Road in Favona. But there's also um, um, a pop-up vaccination center for our Cook Island community on the same, same days, Thursday the 23rd to Saturday the 25th at number seven R2 Place Mangere. And that's at the, um, at the R2 Hall. Uh, for more information, feel free to contact the Pacific Health Delanoa and we'll be happy to give um, information and details about those sites. So yeah, so those are the seven um, no bookings required vaccination pop-ups um, stationed and vaccination centers available to anybody over 12. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Renzo, for that. Um, so just to remind you, Everyone, um, our new weigh-in and Cook Island vaccination drive-through is coming up this weekend. Sorry, Renzo, can you just um, correct me if, if, if I've got the information wrong there? Is it this weekend? Just, to, um, just for our listeners out there? Yes, so they are both drive-through vaccination um, yes. um, events. You do not need to leave your vehicle. Uh, you know, you, you just drive into, into one of the tents and the health professionals will be waiting for you there. They'll just ask for your details, your full name, date of birth, and your address if, um, you know, if, if it's needed. Um, you know, you get jabbed and then you drive off, or sorry, you get monitored for about 15 minutes before you drive off. So very simple, very simple process. Awesome. Thank you so much um, for that, Renzo. 
Okay, um, so recently, I'm not sure if you've seen online, but there's been criticism about our Pacific MPs being absent um, for some of our, um, um, I guess, individuals, Pacific individuals um, mm. who have had negative experiences in MIQ. So, you know, for the sake of moving forward, you know, what are your thoughts on how our leaders could better approach the needs um, of our people during this outbreak? I, I think, I think if we just put aside the different organ organizations hats that we wear, then we will come to a realization that we need to work together as a team. I'm aware, I know that um, we have obligations, you know, we have responsibilities to fulfill and we have commitments to different organizations, different companies um, that we work for. But when it comes to a serious pandemic like COVID-19, we really need to take those hats off and come together as, as a community. And for me, um, I've seen the, um, you know, that, that video from a brother of ours. Um, I, all I can say about that, that criticism, um, Sana, is that we don't know what he went through. No one knows. No one understands what, what to Sunny, you know, what Juwala went through, only him. And we could understand because, because he was dying, you know, he was infected with, with COVID-19 um, and he was denied, um, you know, um, a very simple service that he asked for. But um, I guess now is not the right time to, you know, to, to, to come up with any differences. Now is the best time for us to work together as a community, like I said, we just really need to take, for example, myself, I need to take my hat off as a community manager for Total Healthcare and Local Doctors and say, hey, I'm going to be promoting any sites, any vaccination centers, because this is for my people. This is for our people. But if I was only wearing my Total Healthcare and Local Doctors hat, I would only be promoting and I would only be telling people to go and get vaccinated and get tested at our sites. But that's not how it should be. As a community, we need to come together and work together, even in the media. Our Pacific media radio stations need to be working together with, you know, with, um, my, with the minority, with media like Blue TV, because we're not all about ourselves. You know, this is for, um, it's, it's for the good of, of all our people, our Pacific and Maori community. So the key word for me is that, um, you know, to answer that question is, take those hats off, come together and work as one. I, I love that. Yeah, definitely take, um, take off our hats, like our professional hats. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, we are someone's daughter, mother, father, yeah. brother, all of that. And we need to do everything, um, you know, in our power to ensure that we're all um, safe, safe from this outbreak. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you so much, Renzo, for pointing that out. Um, so like, know, yeah. Sorry, can I just add, um, I would like to commend and, and I would like to acknowledge the work that our um, MPs do, to be honest. Oh, As, absolutely, you know, absolutely. I, I just don't think most of our MPs have had enough sleep since you know, mm. the lockdown. Um, they are constantly and regularly on Zoom meetings with our, with our um, you know, church leaders and with our Pacific leaders and you can just see sometimes you know some, some of their posts just comes across you know you can just tell that they haven't had enough rest so you know I do feel sorry for them but um, you know uh, and I guess that's that's what they're there for you know in the parliament is to be the voice of our people yeah. and I'm not saying what to Allah say was wrong or I'm not saying I'm taking side I'm just saying that that's you know that's what they're there for and Criticism is, is good to improve our service. So, yeah. Of course. Thank you so much, Renzo, um, which reminds me, I'm going to take um, my Health Talanoa host hat off and also um, acknowledge uh, my stepmother, Anahila, who is an MP. Um, I don't think I say this enough, but I feel that she does a lot of great work in our community. Mm. And so I just want to... Um, you know, commend you, mom, for doing all that you do. And I know that me being in the media hot seat isn't, um, you know, quite easy with our relationship. 
you know, because I do want to be um, neutral in this position, but thank you, Renzo, for reminding us that, yeah, let's take our hats off and commend um, the leaders for what they're doing, um, whether it's right or wrong, um, you know, everyone's doing the best that they can um, to ensure that our Pacific people um, are, are, are served. Hey, mm. thanks so much. But anyways, um, back to our discussion. You know, what can what can we do as a community, Renzo, to be more kind to our frontline workers? Like, I just I can't think, imagine the, yeah. the stress that they go through, you know? I think, Sana, the best support that we can give and we can offer to our frontline workers and essential workers is by following the simple rules. That's it. You know, if we can all do that, that's us doing our part and that's us supporting the work that they do because the moment that we break any rules, the moment that we, we, we don't follow the simple rules set by the Ministry of Health, that's us making their jobs harder, to be honest, you know, because, you know, we get out there, we've, we, we saw it on, 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 on the media, you know, in the weekend. Um, a couple went down to Wellington, broke the rules, approached the, um, you know, the, the guidelines. Another couple went down to Taupo. Um, another couple went down to Wanaka. You know, a, a prisoner even made it out of Auckland uh, from a level four area down to level two area. Now we, we, we've seen that, you know, there's, there's three cases in, in, in Hamilton now. So I think the best support that we can offer, Sana, by just following the rules and by taking their advice. And if and if we are feeling any symptoms of COVID-19, please go and get tested. That's, I think for me, that's the only advice I could give out to our community um, on what we can do to support the work that um, our frontline workers are doing. Absolutely. Everyone, it's, it's so simple. Um, just follow the rules, stay home, um, get tested if you have symptoms. But please, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it'll, it'll be of benefit to you, but it also help our frontline workers who I see, mm. um, you know, are going through a lot. Mm. And I bet it's mentally challenging as well, you know. Um, this outbreak only happened, like, what, last year? Yeah. And it, it's probably already taken um, a, a toll on their health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I commend you also um, to all of our frontline workers, whether you're in health, or at the supermarkets, um, yeah, stay strong, kia kaha. But anyways, Renzo, what message do you have for people who are yet to receive the jab? You probably already mentioned it, but you know, I, I just want you to emphasize that message. Um, yeah, just for people who, who are still doubtful. Yeah, Sana, um, can I just start with saying that, um, you know, if, if if you're unsure, um, it, is, it is your choice, you know, no one is forcing you to get vaccinated. Um, but I just want to say to you that in order for everyone to, our community to understand that we just need to trust the, the right people, you know, we need to go to the right people to get the advice from, you know, if you have that bar, that relationship with your, with your formati or your GP, or, or your uh, church minister, go to them instead of just sliding up, you know, up and down on your on your Facebook and then you saw like uh, some story there and then you thought, oh man, it, this is true. You know, I, I want to encourage everyone to, to do some really good research um, by asking the people that you trust. Um, if, if English is a barrier for some of our parents, please use your whanau, use your kids, you know, they, they can speak English, you know, they can, they can communicate in English, so use them. This is not the time for parents and the, and the whole Ainga to work together. Um, yeah, so that's what I what I want to get out to uh, um, our Ainga and our families is to um, yeah to go to the people, right people, listen to the right people, and this is time to actually um, think about developing a holistic um, approach for your for your family. You know, looking after your physical well being making sure that your mental well-being is, is, is stable and that your your spiritual well-being is, is, is also good as well, you know, with God. So, yeah, so that's the only advice I can, you know, I, I thought I would give out today, Sana. Awesome. I, I, I so love that, Renzo. Um, yeah, just to emphasise, just a second that, please, people, you know, talk to people who you trust. Um, you know, we have so many doctors and nurses out there. I mean, they've 
they've trained for years, right? Yeah. Um, to have all this knowledge about illnesses, vaccines, you know, they, they're there for you. So don't be afraid to approach them, but also for those, um, you know, um, that are not so confident in English, um, like Lorenzo said, please utilize your family members to help um, with translation purposes. Thanks so much, Renzo, um, for our Tala no today. Uh, do you have any final comments? Are there any TikTok um, videos that we can look forward to? <laughs> um, oh, yes. Now you mentioned TikTok. I'm not going to show one of the, you know, TikTok that I've done. But um, um, I think, um, you know, social media is, is good, but we just got to use it wisely, um, use it for our own benefits. But, um, yeah. Um, we really need to engage with our young people, you know, by going to where they are and where they communicate, where they, yeah, just a comfortable, you know, space for them. And TikTok is one. So thank you so much, um, Sana, for having me on the show. And I, I love you so much, my beautiful Pacific community. And yeah, thank you so much for taking the wheel and, and being my driver today. <laughs> no worries. Um, no, I've had, I've had a lot of, um, I was moved by this um, show particularly because, you know, Renzo um, is the first person to have believed in me um, you know, in doing this, this co-hosting gig. So I'm so thankful that, um, you know, he, he's put his trust and faith in me and, and hopefully uh, I've done my brother proud. So thank you so much. <laughs> Blues all day, every day. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, so today I am, I believe I am going to share our COVID update. Um, so it's been identified that we've had 22 new cases in the community in Auckland, um, which contributes to the 1,071 total community cases linked to the current outbreak. Um, I also believe that the government will be making its alert level announcement um, at 4 p.m., which is in 30 minutes. So please check the MOH website, sorry, MOH as in Ministry of Health website um, for more details. So don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, um, to book your vaccine or even um, go to the vaccination drive-throughs, which we will post on our Pacific Health Tala North Facebook pages today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we will be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. And I look forward to, um, you know, talking about everything health-related, whether it's your physical, spiritual, and mental health. lover, and have a great day.
Es squad, baby. Rex, J. Sands. Oh, say I'm an inner, say you are complete to me, I get you. By the way that you move and the way that you smile. Say, oh my Torima, baby, you be giving your hand, I'll take you anywhere. You give me something that I never had. Cause you care, but about to me and the family. Say, why you waiting for me to talk to you? Listen what you say, uh. yeah. Don't move out in a camera, yeah. They on the nail, yeah. do that to wine, yeah. That to wine, yeah. Say, come on, in and not the fight, don't get out, say.